So almost two years ago, Disney bought Fox. And with that, that means that the rights to the X-Men go straight back to Marvel, which is great because then we're going to finally have the X-Men and the Fantastic Four in the MCU. They already announced that we're getting a Fantastic Four movie. I cannot wait for that. They also announced that Deadpool 3 will be happening and will take place in the MCU, which is fantastic. I cannot wait for that. And since that happened, Hasbro has the rights to make figures based off of those Fox films. And well, here we are now. This is an entire Deadpool 2 wave of Marvel Legends figures. What's going on everybody? It's Super Mando Bros here. Today we're taking a look at this entire Deadpool 2 wave. It's insane. I'm so happy these finally happened. Deadpool 2 I thought was a good film. I'm a fan of Deadpool as a character and when I heard that they're making an entire wave based off of the film, I was, I was so, I was so excited. Okay, we're good. We're good now. But yeah, we have an entire Deadpool 2 wave. So, we're gonna take a look at all of these figures today. I'm so excited to take a look at them. So let's start off with um let's start off with Domino. So take a look at the packaging for Domino. It's just like the other X-Men movie styled figures, but instead in red. On the top, Marvel Legends series logo. Warning, choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three years old. The original number crossed off with 14 plus. You can see the figure here with all the accessories. On the bottom, the X-Men logo with the Deadpool sticker on top of it. Hasbro, her actual name is crossed off at a sharpie which I really like that, and Marvel's Domino is written on the bottom. On the right, and we have some art of Domino with the Marvel Legends series logo on the bottom. And on the other side, same exact thing. On the back, we have that same exact art that we see on both left and right sides of the packaging. On the side, we do see her real name crossed off in Sharpie and Marvel's Domino written right next to it. And a whole bunch of Lego stuff on the bottom. On the top, the X-Men logo with a sticker on top of the Marvel Legends series logo. And on the bottom, a whole bunch of Lego stuff. So without further ado, let's open it up. Luck isn't a superpower. It's certainly not very cinematic. Yes, it is. Let's meet in the middle and say no, it isn't. Here's the figure out of the packaging, and honestly, I really like the way this figure looks. The figure looks really accurate to what she looks like on screen, and the sculpt is fantastic, and the paint details are pretty good. There's not a lot of paint on the figure, which is fine by me. So, take a closer look at the head. The head, they're using the photoreal technology, which is pretty good. There's some dots, so, which is something that it happens when you use the photoreal technology, which is fine if, you, if you're far away, you can't really notice it but if you're up close you can definitely notice the little dots there but it doesn't really bother me and it just looks pretty good overall her hair is made out of this rubbery material which is very interesting and yeah it just looks really good the torso looks pretty good there is not a lot of paint detail there's some paint detail here 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 and right here but that's about it it's not anything else remotely unique about it. There is no paint on the arms, but there are some paint on the fist. She also has this belt right here, which is made out of a flexible material, so it moves around so it doesn't remove articulation, which is great. Uh, the legs, there is not that much paint detail here. They did a pretty good job. I don't see any errors there. And yeah, overall, this figure looks really good. Also, forgot to mention, they are using pinless joints, which is great. I really like the way it looks compared to the pin joint. So here's a figure with uh, pinned joints, and they just look really weird compared to the pinless joints and I just really hope they start mo using more pinless joints in the future because they just look really great compared to the pin joint. The pinless joints are definitely better than the pin joints. For accessories she comes with trigger hands if you don't know how this works. Basically you get the figure and then you remove the hand you get the other hand and you just plug it in like so and now she can hold a gun speaking of guns she comes with this little tiny gun right here there is no paint on here but the sculpt is fantastic there's also a hole here so you might be able to put an effect piece in there i'm not quite sure about that trigger finger can get into the slot ah, i'm having difficulty now she is holding a gun and also there is some storage on the figure so you could store this gun right here and it's really, really tight in there. It's not going to fall out, which is a good thing. She also comes with two more guns, which are really interesting. The sculpt is really good, and the paint detail, there's, like, barely any paint detail on there. It's just silver around, and that's about it. Uh, there's also a knife on the end, which is really interesting. A gun in the hand, you just slide it in, and then you move it around so it gets the trigger finger in the slot. 
I'm, I don't know anything about guns. And now she is holding a gun. Last thing that she comes with is an entirely new head. This is a completely different sculpt from this sculpt here. This one has the goggles from when they jump out of the plane in Deadpool 2 and it all goes bad. If you don't know how to put the head on, all you gotta do is take this head off of its ball joint here, which you can kind of see how the articulation works on there. And then you get the new head and you just put it on like so. Looks pretty good. For the articulation, there's the dumbbell joint, the head and the neck, and look up about that far, down about that far, swivel side to side, and also there is some tilt. There's a ball joint at the torso. With the head and torso, she can look down that far and go back about that far. The arms can go all around and out about that far. There's a bend there and can swivel side to side. The hands can move back about that far and forward about that far and can swivel side to side. This is the trigger hand and it's the same on this hand here. The legs on ball joints and can go out that far and can go back about that far. It really can't go that far and can go out about that far. There is a swivel at the top of the legs here. There's a double bend at the knee and 40 feet here. It go forward about that far, back about that far, and can swivel side to side. So overall, this is honestly such a good figure. <laughs> Next up, we're taking a look at Cable. Now, there's not that much remarkably different from this packaging compared to Domino's if we compare the two. The only things that are different is the name of the character at the bottom and the sides, different art in the back and as well as the other side, different art. And also, I forgot to mention, the background here is the X-Men logo. I, I forgot to mention, I just wanted to let you guys know about that. But yeah, it's not that much different from this packaging compared to the other packaging, so let's just open up the figure. Your time's up, you dumb fuck. Well, that's just lazy writing. So here is the figure out of packaging, and I really like the way this figure looks. This figure looks so good and so accurate to what he looks like on screen. The sculpt is fantastic. Pretty good paint application. So we'll take a look at the head here. We we'll can take a look at paint details. As you can see, they are using the photoreal technology. Uh, it's fine. It works. Uh, the eye as well just looks so good. They did such a good job painting that eye right there. And this eye right here, to me, just looks a bit off. It could be that this is accurate to what it looks like in the film. It just looks a bit off to me. The cuts here are looking fantastic. For the hair, uh, it's it's all right. The hair is all right. I would say that the hair is all right. Uh, they did not do that great of a job with the hair because like they have this black mark right here. It's not part of the hair sculpt. They just did that. And in some areas on top of the head, you can see some tan poking through. But it did some good job adding some gray into it to represent that. Well, he's it's a bit of an older guy. And on the back, there is some just some detail of hair back there. But yeah, other than that, they did a pretty good job. I also want to mention real quick that this hood piece, this jacket piece, this... I don't know. I would just say it's a jacket. This cape jacket thingy mobop. This is a separate piece. It actually does not plug in, so there's no holes on the back here to plug it in. And you just put it over the head, and, you know, it moves around there. It, it's sculpted, so it moves, stays like this, but it does move around pretty easily. And it can pop off time to time. If your head's, like, in a position where it could easily pop off but if you like have it down it's not really gonna move around taking a look at the torso here he's wearing this brown shirt which is its own sculpt and this vest here which is not that much paint here there's some paint right there and some paint right here but about that that's pretty much it on the back there's nothing back here but on the neck there is actually some pretty good detail there to represent his cybernetic infection it looks really good especially like from back here it just looks so good uh for the arms there's nothing really here there's some painted detail here and the hands which are trigger hands you know there's not that much detail there this arm though i really like it is it his cybernetic arm there is some metallic detail here and up here which looks nice and there's nothing else really here there's some silver painted on the fingers uh, but other than that there's nothing really else to the arm for the torso he has a belt down here with some paint there he has uh, his daughter's teddy bear back here and then he has a place to store his gun this belt does move around a bit it doesn't remove articulation which is a great thing for the pants absolutely nothing here it's just pants not sure if this is new or not uh, but there's some paint detail there and for the boots there's absolutely no paint detail for accessories he comes with two Fist, and they are slightly different from one another. One has uh, flesh right there and one has uh, silver metal right there. Other than that, there's not nothing really different other than the fact that one's for the left arm, one's for the right arm. Other than that, that's they're basically the same. And how this works is that you have to put a lot of... Oh, you have to put a lot 
of force ah there we go into removing the hand and then you have to put a lot of force into putting the hand <laughs> in ah, there we go and yeah now he has a fist next accessory we have is a little gun right here i believe this is a nine millimeter i don't know anything about guns so if i get this wrong i'm sorry i don't know if this is a brand new sculpt or not there's not really any paint detail on the gun or when i say that i mean there is none and to put it into his hand there we go. And now he is holding this gun. Yeah, surprisingly, there is actually no storage for this gun, which is odd. Actually, wait, hold on. There is storage for the gun. Ooh, this is brand new development. I didn't know this. So this storage thing here is actually storage for the gun. So can he actually grab the gun? Yes, he can, somewhat. Next up, we have this gun right here. This is, I believe, a brand new scope. There is no paint detail here. Yeah, you might be able to put an effect piece right there. There's this slot right here, and I'll tell you why in a second. And basically, you could also put this in his hand. There's no place to put the trigger for Finger. It does look pretty interesting. You can put the hand down and you can, you know, hold it like this. And you can store this right on the figure right here. You can store it right there and now he could grab it, which is nice. Another accessory we have is this, which I already talked about. Next up, we have this piece right here, which uh, he really can't hold. There is no paint detail here. There's this slot right here. And the reason why is because it comes with a big ass gun. Look at this. I just really like the way this looks. A very nice looking futuristic gun. Uh, there is some paint detail here and here. And also, uh, you can see the glue. And what's cool here is that there's this area here. And you can put this as well as that gun right there into this area there and now you could you could recreate the scene where he's adding on all these different stuff onto his gun which is pretty cool and you can place this in his hand there we go and yeah now he can hold this gun he can hold it with one hand but to make it look really cool you could use both hands to <laughs> you could use both hands to grab it which is pretty cool i have a fist right now for this hand so i really can't grab it but yeah it looks really cool i really do like the way that looks taking a look at articulation there's dumbo joint the head and neck can look up about that far can look down about that far it's not not really that far down can swivel side to side and also there you can have some tilt as well you could go down about that far can go back about that far can go back about that far i don't get why they did this since they have the vest here i think it would make sense if they did a ball joint but you know it is what it is. So the arms can go all the way around, can go up about that far. There's a swivel here. There's a double bend at the elbow. And for the hands, the hands can swivel side to side. And since this is a trigger hand, can go up and down. And for the other hand, can swivel side to side and can go side to side. Can swivel here. There's a ball joint at the leg. So, so the legs can go up about that far, back about that far, and can go out about that far. There's a swivel up there. There's a double bend at the knee. Uh, the boots can swivel side to side and can go forward about that far. Can go back about that far and can swivel side to to side. So overall, this is a fantastic figure and I highly recommend you guys get it. The next characters we're taking a look at is Deadpool and Negasonic TH Warhead. Taking a look at the packaging here on the top, Marvel Legends series logo, 14 plus on the right side, on left side, warning choking hazard. So you can see everything the figures come with. On the bottom, the X-Men logo with a Deadpool sticker on top of it. The character's real names crossed off in Sharpie with Deadpool and Negasonic TH Warhead written in Sharpie sharpie the hasbro logo on the bottom and on the right side we have some art of negasonic teenage warhead which looks fantastic all the art here on the side and the back just look fantastic and on the other side we got an image of deadpool and i really like the way this art looks it looks so so good and on the back we have the same exact art here with the actual names of characters crossed off in sharpie and negasonic teenage warhead and deadpool written on the side and in a white marker and on the bottom whole bunch of legal stuff on the bottom whole bunch of legal stuff top the x-men logo with a deadpool sticker on top of the marvel legend series logo as well as part on the x-men logo so yeah without further ado let's get into it and you are negasonic teenage warhead negasonic teenage what the shit? So let's take a look at the uh, mediocre figure of the wave. Now I'm not a big fan of Negasonic Cage Warhead as a character, and this is probably the blandest figure out of this entire wave. There's nothing really that interesting about this figure. It's not like Cable where he looks cool. This just looks like 
and X-Men. For the head sculpt, they're using the photoreal technology here and it doesn't look that great. I'm going to be honest with you. The eyes just look a little bit off to me. There's no paint errors I can see on the head sculpt, which is great because Cable's kind of had an error. Her long earring here looks fine and her earring here looks fine. And the torso here, there's yellow paint detail here and that's it. There is also some texturing detail on the torso, but that's basically it. There's nothing really interesting for the torso. Uh, the same with the back. There's there's nothing really interesting there. For the arms, there is some paint detail here, and that's basically it for the arm. There's also some sculpting detail on the arms, as well as part of the hand. There are some paint details on the hands, obviously, for the fingers and this yellow right there. Same with this hand right here, but this one has a fist instead. She does have a belt for the lower part of the torso, which has some... Uh, silver paint detail here and for the buckle it does move around a bit and also there's some yellow going around her body here and then for the legs there's yellow paint detail here and that's it it's not an interesting figure it's the worst figure out of this entire wave but it's not a bad figure overall taking a look at Deadpool now I love the way this figure looks it's probably has to be one of my favorite figures in my collection it looks so 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 good and honestly this probably might be one of the best figures in the wave if not the best figure just looks so good taking a look at the face it has a whole bunch of the fabric detail throughout the entire body they painted the black of the face and the white there and looks really good there's an error right there though but it's not noticeable so it's completely fine and that's it for the neck you can see the black collar what's interesting is that something happened with the sculpting right there I, I that's that's weird there's also some detail on the neck for the torso it looks really good it has so much detail there the paint looks fantastic and the details like for example you can see the two gunshots there I believe these are gunshots and you can see all like the scratches and all that it just looks so so good and then for the arms there's some paint detail here and here. I don't know what happened here. It's not supposed to be like that. If you look at this hand, it's somewhat like that. And for the hands, there's no paint. This is a weird thing. So basically these open hands and the fists have no paint detail. It's weird. They didn't put any paint detail on there. They're just supposed to be silver right here. Uh, but there is none. It's just black for these open hands and the fists. It's weird. I don't get why they did that. And then for the back, there is some detail there. There's also where you could put the sword. And there's just so much detail going around the body. It just looks so good. And also, he does have a belt and a strap going around. And this is movable. There's the Deadpool logo there. Some paint detail here, there. And some paint detail on the pockets there there's also some page detail right there as well for the legs there's some page detail there there's some detailing around here and there is guns here but what's weird is that it doesn't come out you can't take these off they are stuck in there they're glued in there i don't get why they did that it would have been great to have extra accessories but they didn't do that i don't get why they did that it's, it's weird there's some bait details on the knees there and then down here you can see some paint detail there some black paint detail this is where you can put the knife right here and then for the feet there is there's some red paint detail right here this figure just looks fantastic for accessories for negasonic teenage warhead she doesn't have as much accessories as deadpool first thing she comes with is an alternative fist an alternative open hand if they can focus there these are the same exact fists and open hands you see on the figure but of course they're flip-flop because one's for the other side of the hand it's basically the same there's some paint detail for the hands and the yellow there and if you don't know how this worked the next accessories we have which are these fire pieces i'm not sure if these are new or not i don't think they are but i'm not quite sure about that which looks pretty good but yeah this looks pretty cool this could be used for some great photography or a way to display the figure for deadpool's accessories he has a lot the most simple ones being the other open hand and the other fist if this would focus the other open hand and the other fist and these are exactly the same as the hands that are already on the figure the first weapon accessory he comes with is a knife and this is it's not that much paint detail there's just some silver right there and that's basically it there's some storage for the knife which is right here and you could just put it in like so it is very tight in there so i i don't think it will fall out which is a great thing especially since this is such a small thing you could easily lose it heck i lost it please be very careful about that the next item he comes with are two swords and there's not that much interesting there i, I believe they're katanas there's just some silver paint detail there and that's basically it it's made out of a flexible material and these can be stored on the figure back here but you could make deadpool hold it with these sword wielding hands and what's interesting 
is that they have silver paint detail there. But if you don't know how this works, you just... It's very tight. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Now he's holding his sword. The next things he comes with are two guns. Now these guns aren't needed because there's already guns that are on the figure, but they are glued in. So they had to include guns. There's absolutely no paint detail here. I'm not even sure if these are new or not. They're probably not. And he does come with trigger hands, which are used to hold the gun. And uh, now to put it on the figure. Ah, there we go. There we go. So now he is holding his gun, which I don't get why they needed to add a gun because he already comes with two guns. And the last thing he comes with is a unicorn, and I don't want to say what he does with this unicorn. There is some paint detail right here for the horn and for the eyes. But yeah, those are accessories for Deadpool. For articulation, surprisingly, she does not have a dumbbell joint at the head, so instead she has a ball joint and a hinge joint here, so her head can look all the way around, can look up about that far and down about that far just with the ball joint, but since she does have a hinge, she can go look down about that far and then up about that far there's a ball joint here at the torso for the arms they can go all the way around and out about that far bend a single bend not a double bend and can also swivel side to side for the hands they can swivel side to side and then go forward and back for the legs they're on ball joints so they can go forward about that far you can turn it and can go farther can go back about that far Far. There's a swivel up at the top of the leg, a double bend at the knee. There's actually surprisingly a swivel here. And then for the feet, they can go forward about that far, back about that far, and can swivel side to side. For the articulation for Deadpool, there is a dumbbell joint connected to the head and neck, so he can look all the way around, can look up about that far, down about that far, can swivel side to side. There's also some tilt. And what's interesting is that there's actually a ball joint at the base of the neck, which doesn't really give that much articulation. It does. He doesn't really help going down or back, so I don't get why they added that at all. For the torso, he can go down about that far and back up about that far for the arms there is a butterfly joint here you can only go forward about that far and back about that far the arms can move all the way around can go out about that far there's a swivel at the top of the arm there's a double bend at the elbow the hands can swivel side to side and go up and down the hands can swivel side to side and also move side to side and for the trigger hands they can go side to side and up and down there's a swivel at the bottom of the torso 40 legs there are ball joints so they can move all the way around can go forward about that far back about that far can go out about that far there's a swivel at the top of the legs there is a double bend and then for the feet they can go forward about that far back about that far and can swivel side to side for size comparisons here are all the figures next to each other so overall, I really like all of these figures in this Deadpool 2 Marvel Legends wave. I definitely like Deadpool and Cable the most. And I think the worst one out of all four of these figures is Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She just is the least interesting out of all four of these. But they are all amazing figures and I highly recommend you guys get them. Domino, I've noticed, is the most common figure of the wave. And the Deadpool and Negasonic Teenage Warhead 2-pack are definitely the harder ones to find out of this whole wave. Uh, so overall, these are definitely fantastic figures and I highly recommend you guys get them. And and yeah, that's basically it for this video. I know this one was a bit long, so thank you if you have watched the entire video till the end. Thank you so much. And yeah, see you guys later.